Hey everybody, Justin from Big Red Hunters here. So at the beginning of the year I had bought our trailer for our goose decoys and our hunting setup and uh, ever since then I've been slowly working on little projects here and there to get the trailer fully ready to the point that I think it's uh, fully optimized in the field. So there's been a little bit of things that, over time that I keep adding that I didn't think about before and that goes to one of the things, the latest projects that I did on there that I just finished up tonight. So. Um, there's a lot of information out there that I couldn't find in regards to how people set up on the trailer for hunting but there's other things they set it up for that kind of gave me some tips and then I've also found from some friends on some of the different things they've done that I've taken those and done it as well so I wanted to do a video to show you and uh, hope that some of this stuff can help you out on your setups as well and that you can use it so all right, so just walking through the different things that I've done, uh, one of the things that I had to do when I got this trailer is there's quite a bit of rust that was down on the edge of this, and I had to take some uh, sheet metal that was used for gutters, actually, that matched the side of the trailer and kind of patch up all the way along and uh, put some nice sealant in there to keep the water out. Uh, that's where it all began, and uh, I had to do some patching on the inside as well and that was kind of not optimized really for hunting but it was something that was a necessity that i found for it so um as we had gotten the trailer it was just the shelves up there and then um other than that it was just an empty shell here so one of the things that i'd seen in the past or heard about people doing is the side racks for hanging decoys on you know uh, typically i would always bag the decoys and found um, as necessary as that is to keep the decoys in great shape it just kind of takes forever and uh, not always the best solution to go with so one of the things I found is if I can uh, cut the bagging in half at least by hanging the decoys up on the side then uh, that was a win-win for me so as far as what I did on the system here I ended up having to take some uh, if you can see this, I'm sorry guys, I'm working in the dark here. I had to take some board, put a little bit of a spacing in between the side here, and then um, in between the side of the trailer, and then the conduit. So I just ran conduit all the way down the edge, and uh, that's where the decoys are actually on their bases, and you just slide the bases behind the conduit, So, and then they just hang on there nicely. So. I just put some wood spacing in between the side of the trailer and the conduit and then put those brackets on and then ran that all the way down and then as you can see it kind of worked out nicely so I just hung the first uh, layer or the first bar up top and then as I did that and got that put on I put some of the decoys on and then I can see at that point okay uh, where I need to put the second rail and at that point then I got that hung up so I've seen where people go all the way down to the bottom of the trailer and at some point that might be something that I do as well but I kind of at the time being like to have all my sleeper shells on the side there so um, I did not do that right now. Uh, the next thing I did is I have my A-frame which I had actually just finished getting grassed up but I've had the A-frame shell for quite a while and for me one of the best things to do was just get it in a situation that I could have it up against the side of the trailer and have it nice and uh, secure and out of the way so then when we uh, get to the spot then we can unload whatever we need to and then unstrap the the blind and pull it out and put it together so the A-frame is four panels and what I did is just put the two smallest ones against the wall and then put the two big ones on the outside of that and then what I ran is some uh, D loop kind of don't think you can really see that but I ran some D loop brackets on the side where I could put the end of the ratchet strap and uh, run that through there so uh, it's worked out pretty handy I like it quite a bit um, from there if you look at the floor you can tell it is black what we ended up putting down there is uh, Hunter and I over the summer spent a day of rolling on Linex, it just, uh, which isn't the Linex brand, but it's an off-brand that you can buy at Walmart. Uh, came with the kit, 
and then I got an extra kit where uh, Hunter could help me as well. And we just spent the day of making sure that we can get that all down. And the point being from that is um, this idea actually came from my friend Ben Schmidt. So he had uh, done this to his trailer and I liked it quite a bit. Um, one of the nice things about it is that it gives you a little bit of an extra grip during the winter uh, when you're walking on the fields and you're on the snow and the ice. Um, this kind of gives you that extra grip so you're not as slippery on this floor. So really is kind of worked out and then it also repels the water and keeps the wood uh, nice and secure. So it gives it a little bit of a sealant. Um, from there, you know, we had used the trailer at that point um, for the first time about a couple weeks ago from now even. It took I mean all those months of preparing and then just finally used it with the geese finally moving in and then you know we had gone in the field and realized that it doesn't do much good without any light and I had these little puck lights that uh, you could buy in packs that have water or water they run on batteries uh, double A's and it has a remote but the problem was that they weren't br very bright at all and then um, on top of that I didn't have light on the outside of the trailer so um, as we were picking up decoys in the dark or putting them out in the dark and then we picked them up in the dark I realized that's a pretty essential thing to have um, something that I really wanted to do so that took a lot of time because I had thought about that in the past and um, really didn't want to run the light based on uh, the trailer uh, wiring, wiring that connects to the truck so sorry guys I'm it's been a long day so I'm trying to use my words here um, didn't want to connect the the lighting to the wiring that goes to the truck I wanted to kind of have it on independent system so um, that's where our friends uh, Josh and Kobe from all bowed up came in um, if you haven't seen or heard about all bowed up go check them out on Facebook they're a guiding company out of Lincoln Nebraska and they do fantastic work and uh, really know how to kill some geese but they had done uh, quite a bit on their trailer and when we we're hunting that day I realized uh, when I saw all of their uh, lighting and what they had done that was something that I kind of wanted to replicate so after speaking to Josh Josh kind of helped me uh, understand with what he did and I replicated it the best way I could um, via what I learned over the phone so what I ended up doing is running some LED lights that on the inside and these LED lights are actually a kit that you buy at the store that um, are meant for the bed of a pickup truck and so they're just little lights that kind of are connected on a string but they're very bright and they're nice and small and kind of pack a punch and they do the trick so um, what I really wanted to do is make sure that all the lighting that I used was LED and that that would um, make sure so that I get the most out of the battery life so um, when I ran those I ran the strips all down the right side here I'm gonna walk here try to get back and show you and then I went halfway down this side. So then you had the lighting for the side door over here. And then I ran lights underneath the, the shelving up front. So then you could see uh, all down below. So that worked out pretty nicely. Um, ran all of those lights to the back to where I have a switch when I open the door. And on the switch, I have connected to the inside and outside lights. So um, what I did is run all of the lighting, the outside and the inside, which I will get to the outside lighting. I know I haven't talked about that much, but I ran all of that to a 12 volt boat battery that had the screw nuts on there. So all of it's connected to that and I know there might be some electricians out there cringing just because I don't have everything necessarily hidden so I did the best that I could and made sure that it all got kind of kept out of the way and made sure that I could run it the best that I could down the trailer so 
<clears throat> going from there, one of the things I also wanted to add that Josh had mentioned they had done was uh, power. So I had ran a cigarette lighter here and had placed that on the side of the shelving here and then put an inverter on that. They hang on the side where we could plug in USB or a regular um, plug and charge phones or charge whatever we needed to within the field. So one of the other things that I plan to do as well is maybe put a power strip into the regular plug and run the power strip to the side to where I can plug in robos if I ever need the robos uh, to get charged when we're in the field. So um, that's probably going to be the last thing that I do with this and call that good in addition to doing a little bit more organizing in here. So um, the last part that I guess I didn't mention is Josh had brought it to the attention that you know one of the things that you need is a battery charger. So I bought a battery charger, which I'm gonna get that out of the box once I create some room here. And I'm gonna have that attached to the side to um, the point where, you know, when I have the trailer at home or the battery needs to be charged, then I can uh, run an extension, co extension cord uh, from the charger that will be in here plugged to the battery. Um, and run it out to the garage so I can recharge this battery. So really was impressed with the system that Josh and Kobe did it all bowed up. Wanted to replicate that, like I said. And then the last part of the trailer that I'll show you guys is that uh, they had light bars on the outside of their trailer up top. So I ended up running two of those, one on each side of 50 inch LED light bar. And then I ran a nine inch uh, light bar on the back of the trailer. So I'll show you real quick. I don't want to spend too much time. I got to respect the neighbors um, as these lights are shining near them. So as you can see real quick on the side up here, we have that light bar and I'll probably run another one at some point in front on both sides. Uh, Josh and Kobe, I think have four or five. So. There's the side one, or the back one, I'm sorry. And then the other side one, so. Really came out nice and handy. It'll be really good in the field. And I'm pretty happy with the system that I've gone with. And as time goes on, I will continue to improve the best way I can and uh, make sure that the trailer is set up so everything's nice and easy. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and that you've uh, found something that you haven't seen or heard of and maybe you can imply or apply to your own uh, trailer needs. If there's something that I haven't thought of or uh, that I didn't mention that you think uh, would be interesting or good for me to use, please leave that in the comments and uh, like the video and uh, hit subscribe. So one of the other things I, I will mention before I go that I noticed somebody did is uh, they had some hooks underneath their shelving uh, where they could hook the orange uh, secure strap for Lucky Duck Robos and just hang them on there. So that might be something I do in the near future as well. So anyway, guys, have a great night. Thanks. Bye.